July 25th, 2018. All right, so I started a foliar feed series, and I want to continue on that. I laid some basic framework for understanding how plants and soil interact with each other in that previous video. So if you have not seen that, I recommend you go back and check that out. Uh, if you want to look into a lot more in-depth information and learn a whole lot more about it, I recommend you check out Advancing Eco Agriculture, either their website or their YouTube channel or their agricultural podcast, and I highly recommend subscribing to that. And that is regenerativeagriculture.com, I believe, or the Regenerative Agriculture Podcast. You'll find it very quickly if you Google it. That said, I want to go into some of the benefits of foliar feeds. I want to say that these are just some of the benefits of foliar feeds. I'm trying to lay a basic framework for why you would want to use foliar feeds and how beneficial they can be. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump into it here. Uh, I'm going to go through sort of a list of things. I'm going to kind of uh, enumerate or uh, elaborate uh, a little bit about each of those points and then move on. I don't want to get too in-depth today. Uh, as time goes on and I get uh, better at describing these processes, I will try and share more information. Uh, so anyway, uh, the number one not the number one thing, but number one on my list, uh, that foliar, feed, foliar feeds can do. One of the benefits is you can address mineral deficiencies faster than soil amendments. So let's talk about that. For example, uh, I have a potassium deficiency in this tomato crop. Most people call this blight, but it's really because uh, we're starting to fill fruit, we're setting more fruit, we're setting more flowers, we're sizing fruit, and we're building frame. So if you look at uh, the uh, nutrient requirement curve, oh, hi there bumblebee. <laughs> so if you look at the nutrient requirement curve as a plant gets bigger and produces uh, more fruit and has to fill and sweeten those fruit, that curve goes up nearly exponentially. So that's something to keep in mind. So uh, this foliar, or this uh, potassium deficiency I could address that by putting some nutrition in the, in the soil here. I could put down a potassium nutrient drench. Uh, there are many different types. I personally like this stuff from Advancing Eco Agriculture. Those guys make really uh, well-targeted blends out of pure and clean materials. Um, so I could do that, um, and that would take about a week, um, maybe as fast as three days, and depending on environmental conditions, could take up to two weeks before the plants are able to reach that with their roots, absorb it, transfer it to the plant, and put it to use. Now, if I come through here with a foliar feed of, say, Hollow K from Advancing Eco Agriculture, which is just a, 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 a available but not soluble form of potassium, I think they comprise it primarily from, uh, from rock, some, some sort of rock dust uh, to a really fine grind. But I could come through and foliar feed these plants, and in 24 to 48 hours, those plants will be able to absorb that nutrient, sometimes even faster, and take it directly in and put it right to use. And so I can, con I can uh, correct a mineral deficiency in 24 to 48 hours directly in the plant. That doesn't mean I wouldn't go back and, uh, you know, add more of that nutrition to the soil as well, because obviously there is a deficiency there. Um, but also in doing so, one of the other benefits of the foliar feed is when you foliar feed potassium on here, you accelerate this plant's photosynthesis and you accelerate its ability to extract or to pr produce sugars through photosynthesis. And some of those sugars go out into the root system and unlock more potassium. So in a way, it's a much more efficient way to increase potassium availability in the soil. Um, most soils, uh, at least most clay soils, have some ridiculous amount of potassium in them. I think it's like 40,000 pounds to the, to the acre in the top six inches alone. Uh, but most of it's unavailable because it's locked up in clay colloids. While well, you start getting exudates coming out of the plants, you accelerate the biology, and all of a sudden you can unlock those clay colloids and get to that nutrition that's locked up and unavailable. So that's another benefit of foliar feeds. Um, Let's go back and take a look at the list here quick, and uh, we'll move on to the next point. Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, so I did touch on it in, this, in the last couple of minutes, but uh, I guess I should go into a little bit more. Uh, one of the major benefits of 
the foliar feeds is increasing photosynthesis, especially if you use, I should mention, foliar feeds always should be targeted to do the specific job that you're trying to do. If you're trying to address complete trace mineral and hormonal nutritional support, you should use a product or um, well, you should use a product that doesn't have to be a product. You could make your own mix if you want. But you should use something that's targeted specifically for doing that. If you're just trying to increase photosynthesis, you should use something that's targeted specifically for trying to do that. For example, uh, Advancing Eagle Agriculture has a, a uh, foliar feed product called Photomag, and that is targeted specifically at increasing photosynthesis. And I think it's got like uh, magnesium and uh, I forget. There's a few other things in it that that are uh, that support the biological process of photosynthesis. Uh, you know, magnesium is a big part of that. Um, uh, for chlorophyll is uh, shaped similar to the blood molecule, to the red blood cell molecule, but instead of uh, using iron and oxygen, it's uh, magnesium and nitrogen. Uh, so you have. Uh, I think it's nitrogen in the center and four magnesium around it. Makes a chlorophyll molecule. I could have that backward, but anyway, so you understand the principle uh, that you're targeting specific trace minerals to do specific tasks. All right, let's move on down the list. Okay, so I was going to talk next about uh, how it unlocks nutrition in soils, but I already kind of covered that as well. So uh, I guess I'm running off my mental list pretty well. Um, Another thing it does, obviously, is a side, a side effect or a direct effect of, photo feed, uh, of uh, foliar feeds is, your, is increasing photosynthesis, you're increasing plant growth, you're speeding growth. And so you can build frame faster, fill fruit faster, ripen faster, and you can go from seed to harvest faster. And in that process, because you've accelerated the health of the plant and the health of the soil, you actually can yield more fruit for the same area. And you'll find as you really start to get health up at a very high level on a farm, you'll start to have to spacing plants out more and more and more. And you can actually reduce plant populations and increase yield and harvest. And not only that, but you also increase yield and harvest uniformity. Uh, those flowers and fruit fill uniformly, same size, they ripen at the same time, um, that whole thing happens much more uniformly. Uh, one example I know I heard uh, Mr. Kemp speak of about uh, out in the Williamette Valley, a farmer who was using foliar feeds and really addressed his trace mineral nutrition on his blueberry farm. He went from having to run, I think it was three or four different harvest runs through with the machine harvester to harvest the blueberries. And he was actually able to turn that down to two harvests and I think he was getting like 95% of the berries ripe all at once and all picked with the harvester in the first pass. So uh, you, can really, you can really reduce your labor cost uh, when you can uh, you know, uh, ripen uniformly and, and have all your fruit ready at the same time. You can harvest them all at the same time and ship them right to market. Less passes, less labor, and you know, it's, it's, it's a serious financial gain for a farm if you're farming for profit. And if you're farming for your own food, well, I mean, it doesn't hurt to just pick it all at once and be done with it, especially if you're making tomato sauce or salsa or something like that. So, uh, so that's another one of the benefits, and we'll go on to the next. Okay, so I had a list of about 12 things, I think, uh, that I was going to go over, but it seems like uh, they're so synonymous, or even symbiotic, uh, pieces that they actually end up going together. So I guess what I'm going to talk about next is uh, stress and disease and pest resistance. Um, I know I have failed so far this year uh, to beat the Colorado potato bug with really truly healthy plants, but that's just indicative of my soil health and a few bad practices. Like I said I, uh, in a previous video, I will be doing a follow-up video on that. We'll go over some of my mistakes and we'll go over how we can uh, better improve that soil for next year. Um, but one of the benefits you get is because you're now increasing plant health um, and uh, addressing trace mineral nutrition deficiencies, you can increase disease and pest resistance. Um, so what happens when you start to get plants that are much more healthy, they start to develop a waxy sheen on the leaf and they're able to assemble more complex compounds. Um, you should really have a look at something called the plant health pyramid. Uh, it's a really good graphical example of how this works.
but basically you can go from like your first level to your second level is I think like carbohydrates your third level you start to form a like amino acids and more complete compounds and then the fourth level you're actually able to complete uh, to form complete proteins with the plant and uh, as most of you probably already know uh, complete proteins are very resistant to um, fungal attack on plants uh, so it, when you develop more complex compounds and those more complex compounds those plant oils are covering the leaf stuff like blight can't get in and attack the plant so that goes back to what I was talking about before about how this is actually a nutritional deficiency um, certainly potassium and there might be other nutritional deficiencies here that I'm unaware of as of yet um, I do have a video into advancing eco agriculture asking them to do a little bit of uh, a visual look through at things and tell me uh, what deficiencies or plant hungers they see. Uh, anyway, disease and pest resistance. So you can build both of those. Uh, the higher you go up on that plant health pyramid, uh, the higher the digestive tract of the pest or insect that's attacking your plant has to have in order to digest that. And so the idea is that the higher you go up, the less uh, the less number of insects can attack it. Um, I guess I could do one example. Uh, I'll try and do I'll try and do a couple examples here for you. So, like I had a white fly infestation in the greenhouse back in the winter on my citrus trees, and uh, so I contacted AEA. I told them the situation about it, and they told me that I likely had uh, excess nitrate nitrogen and not enough molybdenum in my plants, and so. Uh, because of that the, and the balance that was out, those white flies are, were basically chewing on the plant and milking that sap. They like that high nitrate sap. And so as soon as I uh, got some, some um, molybdenum product from those guys, I actually got a product called Micropack because I think I'm deficient in everything in that soil. And uh, as soon as I put that on, within a week, the white fly infestation just stopped. They, they couldn't reproduce, they couldn't chew on the plants, and they couldn't... Uh, it couldn't cause the problems they were causing. So uh, that's one example. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I had another example in mind here. Let me, let me just think for a minute. Okay, so the other example I was thinking of, uh, I haven't personally experienced, but uh, I saw a video from Advancing Eco Agriculture. Uh, a guy had a massive spider mite infestation in his corn, uh, and they addressed it with a foliar feed. I don't know what the foliar feed was, but I, I can I can tell you that it was formulated specifically to target whatever the nutritional deficiency was in that crop and in that soil. And uh, I think it was 24 to 48 hours, all those spider mites were dead, no more a problem. Um, and they didn't use any pesticides, no chemicals, no poisons. The poisons aren't necessary. The plants have built-in immune systems. We just have to help them access them. Um, as far as trace minerals, I think I just want to kind of give an example so you can understand. Uh, if you've had anything in chemistry class or like uh, a good biology class, you probably have covered some of this stuff and how some of these pieces work. But if you haven't, you might not have an understanding of the concept. So I just want to cover the concept quick. Um, one example, and you could certainly go to Advancing Eco Agriculture's YouTube channel and check out their video on this. I'll try and put a link in the description here. Um, one example is like say cobalt. So uh, a lot of apple farmers spend a lot of time spraying a lot of fungicides on their apple crops in an attempt to prevent scab. And I think they have to be out there like every five to seven days or something like that. It's this intensive fungicide program. And so they're trying to prevent scab in the apple because that makes the apple get kind of a scab on it. And it it's not the most marketable look. It doesn't hurt anything flavor-wise, but you know you want your apples going out of your orchard to look good and to go to market and to get top price. Um, where, but see, the thing is, if you realize that uh, there's a compound, I forget what it's called, but. Uh, that compound is in excess and if those apple trees have an adequate amount of cobalt in them and in the soil and in the plant available to them they don't get scab because then that that uh, that apple scab I think it's a virus I could be wrong on that it might be a fungus 
um, but that is unable to attack the plant because it changes the level of that compound. Uh, I definitely will put a link in the description because I really did not explain that very well, but that's one example. Uh, another example, cucumbers. Uh, typical cucumber farming, I uh, usually get about four weeks of production out of cucumbers and then you have to wipe those cucumbers and go to a new planting of cucumbers to carry on with production. Where if your foliar feeds target adequate cobalt, you can extend that to double that amount of time and you can actually harvest for eight weeks off the same plants. So you can basically double your yield simply by having adequate cobalt available. And that's just one of a number of trace minerals. Uh, some of which I'm not even sure if science is caught up with and exactly what they do in plants or human health yet. Um, but there are lots of them. There are some really critical ones like selenium. Uh, that's one you should really look into if you haven't. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to cover some of the basic benefits of foliar feeds uh, and why I do foliar feeds. And, uh, and that they do need to be targeted to try and address the mineral deficiency you're after. Uh, you're always trying to keep a balance in plants and in soil and so if you have an excess of one thing that can actually cause a deficiency from the plant's perspective in another especially stuff like uh, that are kind of like protagonists like uh, like uh, um, potassium and calcium you know excess potassium can make plants act as though they have a calcium deficiency um, just because you put too much potassium on so there's also always a balance kind of thing there I'm not going to go deep into that right now. Um, I just wanted to cover what some of the basic benefits of foliar feeds are, and uh, and how they how they integrate with the with the standard system or with a with a farming system, a gardening system, whatever, what have you. Uh, I hope this has been informative for people. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do so down below. I certainly will respond to any questions or comments. And I highly recommend you check out Advancing Eco Agriculture's Regenerative Agriculture podcast, as well as their YouTube channel and their website. Uh, those guys have been really beneficial on my learning curve. They've helped me learn a lot. I started, uh, I stumbled across John Kempf in 2013 at a Northeastern Organic Farmers Association conference. And uh, after hearing him speak, it completely changed. I was already an organic farmer, but um, it completely changed how I view plants, how I view soils, and how I interact with them. And uh, yeah, he's a really amazing, intelligent guy, very good scientist, and I uh, highly recommend you check out his company and his YouTube channel. Anyway, I hope this has been informative. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.